Okay, in this problem, we're gonna take a 10 kilogram block and push it with an initial velocity of five meters per second. And we're gonna allow this block to coast up a 30 degree hill. And what we're gonna solve for in this problem is the total distance which the block will travel up the hill. Now there is one thing in this problem that we need to worry about, and that is friction. We're gonna say there's friction between the block and the hill. And we're gonna say there's a coefficient of friction of 0.2. Now there's two ways to solve this problem. We can either use force and kinematics, or we can go through and choose to solve this problem using energy. I'm gonna solve this problem using energy. Uh, so, the first thing we're gonna to do to solve this problem is take a look at the forces acting on the block. And we're actually gonna draw a free body diagram showing all forces acting on the block. So the first thing we have is gravity. So gravity acting downward. And we know that force by gravity is gonna be mg. The next force we need to deal with is the normal force acting between the block and the ramp itself. And it's important to note that this normal force is perpendicular to the plane of the hill. And we'll see why that's so important a little later. Then last, of course, we have friction acting backwards on this block. All right, so there's three forces acting on this block. Now there is a tendency to say that there's gotta be some force acting up the hill on this block, but that's not true. The block is coasting up the hill and slowing down as it goes. There's nothing pushing this block up the hill as soon as we let it start coasting. So to solve this problem using energy, what we're gonna do is actually look at all of the work done by each of these three forces. And to do that, to help ourselves get organized, we're gonna look at this graphically. So I wanna take a look at the mechanical energy of this 10 kilogram block. Now we know mechanical energy is made up of kinetic energy and potential energy. In this case, that potential is gravitational. Now each of these forces has some influence on the mechanical energy of the block. Now we know the block is initially moving, so it's gonna be starting with some kinetic energy. But as the block goes up the hill, gravity is gonna do some work on the block. Because the block is moving vertically, the block is going to gain gravitational potential energy. That is to say that the force by gravity is going to turn some of that initial kinetic energy into gravitational potential. So see, there's work done by gravity. Now the normal force, because the normal force is perpendicular to the displacement, it's not gonna do any work on the block. And that's because when we look at our equation for work, work is Fd cosine theta, the normal force is at a right angle to the displacement. So there's gonna be no work done by the normal force. Now last we have friction. Friction is acting backwards on the block. And so what it's gonna be doing, looking at our work equation, I'm gonna put a cute little box around this. Looking at our work equation, friction is acting in the opposite direction of displacement. So ultimately friction is going to be doing negative work. How do we know it's negative? because there's 180 degrees between friction and displacement. And so we're gonna find there's negative work done by friction. Now, friction is a non-conservative force. That means it's going to change the total mechanical energy of the block. And really what it's gonna be doing is removing kinetic energy from this block. So we're gonna see there's negative work done by friction here. That is to say, it's taking energy away from the block. So now that we've identified which of these forces are doing work and we kind of understand how that work is being done, uh, let's take a look at the work energy theorem and start solving for the actual displacement of this block. Uh, now, right off the bat, we know the block is initially moving. So the initial kinetic energy is gonna be one half times the mass of the block times the velocity initially, that's five meters per second. And this gives us 125 joules of initial kinetic energy. In this problem, this is really all the energy we have to work with. That's the initial kinetic. As the block goes up the hill, some of it's gonna turn into gravitational potential and some of it will be lost to friction. Now the initial potential, that's pretty easy to deal with. Let's just go ahead and say this initial height is zero. That means the initial potential is gonna be zero because gravitational potential is just mgh. If h is zero, potential zero. Now our non-conservative work term, this one's gonna be a little bit more complicated. 
Non-conservative work is the work done by all of the forces which are changing the overall mechanical energy of this object. Now, gravity is simply shifting mechanical energy around. It's only friction that's acting as a non-conservative force or doing non-conservative work. So we can say the non-conservative work is simply the work done by friction. Now, work being FD cosine theta, we need to figure out our force by friction. And so our force by friction we know is mu Fn multiplied by the displacement here times the cosine of the angle between friction and displacement. So this is gonna be 180. Now we know the cosine of 180 is negative one. Now, we don't actually know the magnitude of the normal force, but you'll remember for a block on a hill, the normal force is mg cosine theta. So this is gonna leave us with mu mg cosine theta d times negative one. Now I wanna be really careful about this. Theta in this case is not 180. 180, or dealing with this equation, theta, that is the angle between the displacement and the friction force. But this little theta right here, coming from the normal force, well, that's the angle of the hill. So when we plug values into this, we're gonna get 0.2 times 10 times 9.8 times the cosine of not 180, but the angle of the hill, 30, times our unknown displacement times negative one. I'll just put the negative out front here. And this leaves us with negative 17D. So the work by friction, or a non-conservative work, is negative 17D. Now, moving on to over here, our final kinetic energy. Well, the final kinetic energy is gonna be zero. Why is it zero? Because the block stops up here. And last, we're gonna deal with the final potential. I'll do this over here. Our final potential is going to be MGH, where H is the final height of the block. Now, the big mistake that occurs in this problem is people say the displacement is H. That's not true. Take a look over here. I want you to realize H is the change in height of the block. So if the block starts at this height, it's gonna move up some distance h and so we can create a relationship between the displacement which we're trying to solve for and h otherwise we're going to have two variables floating around in here once you realize this angle is 30 degrees so this means if h is equal to d sine theta because it's the opposite side of this right triangle our final potential is going to be m g d sine theta We'll plug in numbers into this. We've got 10 times 9.8 times D times sine of 30. And this is gonna leave us with 49D. So what we have here is initial kinetic, our non-conservative work, our final potential. And we're gonna put these all together in the work energy theorem. It's just plugging in our values. We have 125 minus 17D is equal to our final potential, that's 49D. And we do a little math here to solve for D and we're gonna find that D is equal to 1.9 meters. So this is the total displacement of the block up the hill. And that is how we solve the problem of a block coasting up a hill with friction. And that's all for now.